a 51 year old female who lives in a relatively smaller town of india uh, she undergoes a laparoscopic oagb in her town uh, unfortunately her preoperative weight is only 85 kg and her bmi is just 35 and she has no comorbidities whatsoever on top of it she follows a jain diet which uh, for the benefit of an international viewers is uh, and a step further beyond the vegetarian diet as mentioned by dr palip it's a uh, practically similar to a vegan diet and they cut down on a lot of vegetables uh, now this patient then eventually comes to your tertiary care center with excessive weight loss her bmi has dropped down to 15 kg per meter square so and we know that being underweight is just as risky as being obese she comes and gets admitted under the cardiologist because she has got congestive cardiac failure her ef is just 10 to 15% uh she gives a history of recurrent multiple <coughs> episodes of utis and urtis over the last one year since she's undergone a surgery the cardiologist calls you as the bariatric surgeon dr praveen what are your first thoughts this 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 is going to be a very very tricky situation it is going to be a nightmare with managing these kinds of patients i don't understand why the patient went into cardiac failure but then yeah the other things are certainly understandable because the ejection fraction of 10 to 15% i don't know how the patient is actually still surviving even in the icu honestly or maybe maybe you know many many times there is there is so much of tissue edema that your echocardiogram gives you a poor report it could be much higher it could be shown because 10 to 15 i don't think is survivable that is what i guess so this unless you are on a heart scenario, lung this is an actual patient who came to our clinic so. 10 to 15 should actually be more maybe to the reading might have been wrong because normally i mean i am not a cardi- cardiologist it's not a survivable so there uh, yes, i i just add to that there was a lot of pericardial effusion yeah when the patient exactly. came in okay so so it may not give you the actual value so that 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 should have been the reason so, so uh, looking at this i Oh, sorry plus i think that ejection fraction is more of an observed value right, right? it's not really it's a, a, no it's not it's, it's really a measurable it's, it's value. A, yeah it's a calculation based on the observation of the sonologist cardio what cardio sonologist who is doing it so i think leaving that aside hmm. i'm leaving that aside the patient is a classical case of a protein energy malnutrition so which is a micronutrient deficiency so obviously there are every possible micronutrient deficiency also and that is and she's immunity status is extremely low and that's why she's been having recurrent utis i think this is a patient that requires an intensive intensive nutritional care intensive i mean critical not more than a critical care i would say because i don't think this ef is right because i, I don't see a reason why this patient should actually have a failure as such i think we maybe the lot of fluids in the body is just causing a sort of pre cardiac kind of a, a reason could uh, could possibly be there but i think this patient would just required the tpn to start off with i think the there is no point of just pumping with albumins and albumins because her albumin should definitely be less than 1 that is what i guess that is what it should be and i think not just replacing albumins is important we need to en- ensure she gets proper macronutrient replacement in terms of lipids and the other things i doubt how much orally it would be possible and if we can possibly give orally maybe get in a nasojejunal tube give oral feeds plus give iv t- t- per- per- parenteral nutrition also whatever antibiotics needs to be given and then because now we cannot go for a revision also that is also would not be possible unless we are able to parenterally entirely improve her to some state maybe to get her albumin about not just albumin because getting a albumin to 2 is very easy getting a nutritionally slightly up reduce a tissue edema to go down all the effusions to go down it might take even weeks once we get there i mean as simultaneously you should start looking at the nutritional issues also like zinc to chromium to you know all all these micronutrients also need to be individually looked into and they need to be given because for all the level of cellular function each one of these minerals play a role so even micro even each of these mineral deficiencies need to particularly looked into and that we I and mean, you cannot just put all the mvi injection that we need to give into the iv fluids we cannot go like that they need to specifically managed maybe 3 2 two weeks 3 weeks so maybe 4 weeks luckily if we are able to get her out of this situation then we should immediately go at looking at a reversal i'm 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 not saying sleep just go reversing it just go open it do a gastro gastrostomy and divide it right so dr palep dr praveen has mentioned the key word mineral deficiencies this is your case would you like to elaborate so uh, i think praveen has actually uh, shot in the dark and hit the bulls eye there is no question about it uh, she actually came in uh, ccf uh, and uh, we investigated 
just like uh, what Dr. Praveen Raj mentioned, and look for all the elements, the smallest elements possible. And we found out that it is a deficiency of selenium. Simultaneously, we were already uh, trying to improve the patient's nutritional status uh, over the next uh, few weeks. And uh, we also replaced uh, selenium. And uh, eventually, uh, we got the patient in a much better state. Uh, even her pericardial effusion and the pleural effusion and everything had settled down. And uh, we went in uh, after, I think, three or four weeks uh, of uh, her coming into the hospital and uh, reversed uh, the OAGP, which was performed. And uh, yeah, so that was uh, actually the problem. The... Uh, Anastomosis was just 50 centimeters from the IC junction, which was probably um, a mistake uh, by the first surgeon accidentally. And, you know, sometimes when you count the loop of the bowel and you decide that, okay, this is my 150 centimeters or 170 and accidentally drop that loop and pick up some other loop and go and anastomose it, that must have been the situation. And uh, we undid that thing and did a gastrogastrostomy, as uh, Praveen has already mentioned, and restored normal anatomy. And she was good uh, after the reversal, and uh, she started putting on weight again, and uh, she came back to normal uh, weight for her height. And cardiac function obviously came back to normal. Great. So, Dr. Bharucha, what are the common nutritional deficiencies which you've seen in your practice, and how would they normally present? I think most uh, most patients would develop protein energy or protein uh, uh, protein calorie uh, malnutrition, especially protein malnutrition. Like you said that this patient was Jain and uh, is uh, vegetarian and not taking uh, enough protein. So patient, you know, whenever first of all, whenever whenever you lose weight, may it be after a bariatric surgery or not you are going to first lose your lean mass. You are going to lose your fat mass only after you lose your lean mass. So the first thing that you would see is a patient coming with markedly reduced muscle mass. Yeah, which you can judge either clinically, you look, you just look at the thighs, you look at the buttocks, you look at the, you know, look at his arm circumference, etc. So this is for pro protein energy malnutrition. The other is uh, following uh, bariatric surgery. We see a lot of uh, B12 deficiencies, even after even after a sleeve gastrectomy, which is probably the commonest procedure uh, done now. So patients come usually with mostly with uh, neurological signs. Right. I think these two are these two are the ones that uh, you know present most commonly. And the third is skin changes. I mean. Changes, you, you get skin lesions because of micronutrient uh, deficiencies like copper, zinc, etc. Right. What about iron deficiencies? Uh, it's already very yes. prevalent in our country. Yes, yes. And yeah, actually, by most of the most of the females don't say that in their lifetime they've never had a hemoglobin more than 10.5 or 11. So iron deficiency is a given, I mean, even before you do, before patient is operated and they're living with it. So iron deficiency also is, uh, also is definitely to be considered. Right. So Dr. Praveen, how would you prevent any of these nutritional deficiencies? What all will you tell the patient and how will you follow up uh, any of your bariatric surgery patients with respect to their nutritional <laughs> status only? Yeah. So I think with regard to prevention of nutrition deficiencies, I think um, first we need to start, this basically starts from preoperatively. In fact, most of these nutrition deficiencies are existent preoperatively itself. So I think it's our responsibility to check that. And then that has to be first corrected. And then along with that, the prophylactic doses needs to be given. And I think, uh, I mean, if, you, if the ones who are watching here are bariatric surgeons, I think you know the recommendations for the replacements of the different uh, minerals and vitamins, irrespective of and respective or uh, malabsorptive procedure as such. So I think preoperative identification is very important. If possible, correct it before even you start the patient for bariatric. And postoperatively, simultaneously replace it. And the, your replacement is only a prophylactic thing. If there is already that is existent, that, that needs to be added more. If, in spite of that, the prophylactic ones that we're going to give is not going to be equal for all. Sometimes it could get an overdosing. Sometimes it could become an underdosing. Also, just like what you do for your DBT 
thromboprophylaxis also so which means to say that we need to constantly keep evaluating for the nutritional deficiencies on a on a regimen i think see this regimen if you really ask me everyone will have a different protocol but in simple terms we need to have a protocol in place that is the most important thing and then we follow up ensuring are we overdoing or underdoing and titrate your doses accordingly so this is the most but the important ones that needs to be looked to into are i mean albumin is not important because if albumin is going to be low then everything is going to be low you look at micro which is more importantly start from looking at the hemoglobin iron iron from the iron angle we do ferritin but the tibc is a better indicator then you can look at vitamin b12 vitamin d3 along with it, this i personally do is doing a pth because many times we don't look at pth and that there there is a lot of patient that could be secondary hyperparathyroidism calcium might look normal d3 might look normal but then there could be a hyperparathyroid so pth needs to be looked into whenever we are looking these are something very important if you, if you want to do really more you can obviously do and you can have your protocols for yourself and there are multiple recommendations available in the research and for how long would you give this replacement therapy um this is you know the, as of course all the patients ask you this question also the scientific answer is lifelong that's how it should be but then on a practical note nobody is going to take it lifelong you are not going to take it i am not going to take it even if you are a surgeon yourself going to get a bariatric surgery uh, then you are not going to take it for your life so the, i think the point we need to tell them is you need to ensure normalcy so whether you are going to take it or not we need to ensure normal vitamin levels in the long run but on a very personal note this is purely unscientific i personally see this deficiency that the surgeries is going to cause because of the different malabsorptions you do will actually get recorrected in a year or two because like the short gut syndrome where the body tends to adapt itself even this nutritional deficiency i personally think over the years body will tend to adapt the further deficiencies are more so nutritional which they are not taking it well so ensuring their intake is proper is something that's more important in the long term this is purely a personal belief not scientific so don't take my words when you quote somebody it's when you when you when you actually quote it elsewhere okay.